All right. Thank you for joining, Freya. Congratulations on the win. Uh, that was an exciting one to watch. Uh, can you go and get us started with some thoughts on the match? Yeah. Um, you know, it was definitely another hot one, uh, very hot and humid here. But no, it was good for us to be able to sustain some of their play through some of their sustained pressure. You know, they were very much looking to press and try and force us out wide and be able to contain our play. And it took us a while to be able to figure it out and play through that pressure. But once we were able to start switching play a little bit more um, and started to play a little bit longer, I think that caused them uh, a few issues uh, in terms of being able to to get enough pressure on the ball. Um, I think it was a game of few chances for, for both teams. I think both teams defended well and um, were able to stop the other team from really building any momentum or creating good chances, but just really uh, happy to come away with uh, the three points there. You haven't lost in um, almost two months now. I think our only loss is against Portland um, early in the season. Is that something um, that kind of weighs on your mind or is at the, at the front of your mind at all in, in the coaching? No, um, it's just for us to, to, to literally go game by game and for us to continue to take a step forward for, for each game that we play. Um, I'm not really considering the overall bigger picture right now. We just know that we have to go and do a job each week um, and to be able to work towards our goal. Um, so for us, it's that's really not on my mind. It's just about what we need to do for the next game. And, you know, we'll review this game and then look at concentrating on the next one. And, and that's really about as far as it goes. Okay, great. We'll go and open it up to questions from the media. Uh, Steph, can you go and get us started, please? Oh, sure. Uh, hi, Freya. Um, can you discuss what you saw from Caprice Tidasco? She's someone who has been through multiple ACLs, and this season has really been lighting it up for you, it seems like. And she made some really intelligent plays on the ball trying to, especially in the tag, trying to slip, you know, that back line. Can you discuss, you know, the progress that you've seen from her over the course of the season and the impact she made on the game tonight? Yeah, she's been fantastic. I think, you know, she's really good quality on the ball. She's able to play in tight spaces and then given enough time and space, then she's also able to unlock defenses with her service. You know, we can see the importance of her serve for our, our, our set pieces and our corner kicks. Um, and I think she's just continuing to flourish this season. Her confidence is up. She's been playing really, really well. Um, and also, you know, been keeping it compact defensively um, and making really good decisions. And I think, it's, you know, she's a big part of our defensive record this year and also, you know, a huge part of having assists and for us scoring goals. Mm, not to be an instigator, but how would you rate her among fullbacks in the league? Uh, you know, I think the team of the week is showing itself, right? You know, with her consistent performance and um, ability to be in that team of the team of the month for the league. And I think that's going to continue this week, uh, this month as well. Thank Absolutely you. Plus. Jackie, over to you. Hey, Freya. Um, just was curious if you could talk about how it feels to break Chicago's winning streak, along with not falling into that own goal trap that we've seen with some teams recently. Thanks. Yeah, Chicago are always a, a tough competitor, but for us, it was important. Um, one of our goals was to get two wins in a row um, and get back-to-back -back victories, and that's something we're able to do today, which is a huge turning point for us. So, it, you know, it's now time for us to go on our little winning streak of our own, I think. Courtney, go ahead with your question, please. Hi, Freya. Um, I was curious to know what the decision making was like uh, from shifting Midge from uh, outside forward to outside back. Yeah, we wanted, um, you know, obviously she was played into the game and understood the pace of, of the game that was going at. And, uh, you know, we were expecting and anticipating for Chicago to be very direct and to put us under a lot of pressure in the closing minutes. So her ability to harness Midge's pace and also her defensive skills was going to be important for us. Uh, she was already played into the game and then we were able to, to make the change up top uh, and then have Liz going and pressing a lot more and try and prevent that service from, from being served. So, you know, that was that, was that decision. Steph, go ahead with a follow-up. Thank you. Um, just to follow up on Courtney's question about Midge, it seems like you know, a couple times a game, she'll get this very, I'll do it myself energy. Um, it's very exciting to watch, but has there been any discussion about how you guys can kind of capitalize on that more? Yeah, I think it's it's about putting Midge in spaces, uh, you know, where she's got that space and she can uh, look to go 1v1 and take players on. 
and credit to Chicago, they were able to try and prevent her and to try and shut her down. And, you know, they definitely shifted players that side to try and create uh, less space for her and less room for her to run in uh, on that side. But, you know, again, she showed why she's class and earning that penalty. She, she was through and she was breaking well. So, you know, that's that's the moments that we like to see from her. Mm, thank you. OK, any final questions for Freya before we let her go for the evening? All right, that'll do it, Freya. Thank you again for joining. Congratulations on the win. We will be joined momentarily by Gina, uh, followed by Ali. Hi, Gina. Thanks for uh, for joining. First of all, uh, congratulations on the uh, the win. Um, incredible defensive effort from you out there tonight. Um, you led the led the team with tackles, clearances, and interceptions, um, and were nominated Player of the Match. So, congratulations on that. Um, yeah. Can you give us your your thoughts on the match? Yeah, um, it was it was a match that we wanted to um, go into uh, getting a win. And uh, I think, you know, kind of piggybacking off the last game, we wanted to play our style. Uh, we knew Chicago was a great team. They had a couple wins coming into this game and, you know, we just wanted to play our style at home and uh, defend defend um, our home streak. So, yeah, I think uh, we got into the rhythm the first half. Uh, we dominated it, but the second half, we lost our rhythm a little bit. They came out with uh, strong pressure um, and then, uh, we finally got that second goal, which gave us a little bit of a cushion, but towards the end, we were playing smart and we got that goal against, but uh, at the end of the day, we got those three points. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions from the media. Uh, Jackie, go ahead and get us started, please. Thanks, Jonna. Hey, Gina, um, just thinking about, you know, from this game, Gotham has created a new record with uh, one loss in the first 10 matches. So um, for you, how would you describe the grit and just determination of this back line so far? Yeah, I think we've had a great start to the season uh, with goals against. Uh, it's a record that I think we really pride ourselves in, but um, each opponent's going to be different and challenge us in different ways. So I think it's just going into each game uh, with that mentality of doing everything everything we can to um, prevent them from scoring. Steph, go ahead with your question, please. Thank you. Uh, you know, particularly in the first half, it felt a little bit like even though Gotham was, you know, having some high possession and kind of playing in the Chicago half, they were they were breaking out and looking pretty dangerous periodically whenever they did break out. Um, what was the discussion like on the back line about, you know, containing them whenever they made a break for goal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chicago was very good at that. I think we invested a lot going forward, our outside backs. But yes, it exposed us a little bit defensively, especially uh, with their pass forwards uh, going forward. And they play very direct. So we had to manage that a little bit better uh, throughout the game, which I think we did. But we had to play smart because we knew that they were putting a lot more pressure on our outside backs. So um, yeah, I think we, we had our ups and downs throughout the game. But I think... Uh, we were able to expose them uh, more more often than not. Thank you. Stacy. I see your chat. Did you want to ask uh, Gina um, about the defense? Yeah, sure. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Gina, just talk about what the team was able to do defensively to shut the Chicago team down. They're a really good offensive squad. So what was some of the keys do you feel like you and the team were able to do to just keep them off of the board for the most part? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we knew that they had a very direct play, a direct style. So um, when we would lose the ball, we would, as a defensive line, we had to really be aware of who their players uh, up top were and where they were and kind of get two, two on the ball, uh, two against kind of one of their forwards going forward. And we'd had to try to help each other and make sure that they can't get close to the box. But um, yeah, I think just the mentality of knowing that they're going to be very direct going forward uh, in behind our, our back line as, as often as possible. Courtney, did you have your hand raised? Or did I miss that? Oh yeah, but um, well, actually, I'll ask another question. Um, so coming in, Chicago had a pretty good record of making teams concede own goals. Was there any special preparation for this match to make sure that none of them were conceded? Yeah, I think uh, we we knew that coming in. Uh, the whole league did, and we wanted to stop that streak of of having own goals uh, for them. And uh, we pride ourselves in in trying to. Um, uh, keep the, keep the opponents from not scoring. So I think we're just proud of that, that they didn't weren't able to have an own goal uh, this game and kind of stop their streak. 
I think we're, we're lucky that own goal is on uh, international duty uh, this week. So uh, very thankful for that. <laughs> um, any final questions for uh, Gina before we let her go for the evening? All right, that'll do it for you, Gina. Thanks so much for popping in and congratulations on the, the win. All right, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thoughts on the match? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, we knew that this was a huge match going into the game, just where we are in the standings and where Chicago was with um, us having game in hand. So going into it, we knew kind of it was like this must win game for us, um, for what we want to achieve at the end of the season. So I think that the game was a little bit back and forth in the beginning. Um, and I think that the goal that we scored, the first goal kind of sealed the end of the half with like going into the first half, um, just being up a goal just kind of helped mellow out the mood. I think it's it was a little bit going back and forth between us and Chicago with the momentum of the game. Great. So you are averaging just under 60 passes um, per match uh, through all regular season games and you're, you know, at oh, like almost 92%, you know, passing accuracy. Can you just discuss a little bit yeah, about your ability to be, you know, consistent game in and game out? Because I think this is just a wild statistic. Thank you so much. Um, I think that I, you know, as a number six in the league, when I watch like the men play and I've watched like the best of the best, I've studied the game. I think one thing that just throughout the past like couple of years I've noticed is that their their passes and their like expertise is so their precision is so um almost perfect. Um so I think that I've you know, as a fan of the game has kind of just wanted to work on that to be as precise as possible to, you know, put the ball, my teammates correct foot for their first touch to beat the defender. Like there's so many details that go into the game that I've kind of studied and wanted to, um, you know, just get better as a player and grow as a player and learn. And so to kind of hear that stat, it's really cool because I think every off season I've kind of gone into it, like, how can I, you know, be better? And I think as the six, you're, you know, if you watch every six in the world, they're, they're dictating the play, they're, um, you know, they're controlling the tempo, they are, you know, possessing, they're kind of setting the, you know, they're that bridge between the back line and the, the front line and so, and, and the midfield, so kind of just start the attack. And so, um, you know, I try my best to kind of put my teammates in the best position to um, either attack, to relieve pressure. Um, and I think, you know, getting the ball, whether I have someone on me or not, my job is to complete the pass and, and especially in the role that I'm in. And so that's what I try to do every single game and try to help my teammates kind of move the ball forward and, and keep possession. Cause I think the, uh, you know, this league, you know, there's everyone's so athletic and it's such a transitional game to kind of like settle the game down and keep possession. That is what the difference is between, um, I think, you know, being able to score a goal or, or not in this league. Well, keep up the good work. You're doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, we'll go and open up to questions. Uh, Jackie, can you go ahead and get us started, please? Yeah, thanks. Hey, Allie, congrats um, on your goal today. I just wanted to think about, um, you know, in looking ahead, how are you hoping for the team to just capitalize on this win as you prepare to play uh, against the Dash in the good old summer heat and just thinking about what that's going to be like for you? Yeah, I think that, you know, we have to kind of go into each game and take it as it comes. I think that what's good about this team is that we're not looking too far ahead. It's kind of one game at a time. Um, and so now that this game is passed, you know, tomorrow and the next day, we'll kind of uh, recover and then kind of get focusing on Houston. Um, I don't think anyone likes to go to Houston in August um, and play a game for 90 minutes. So I think we'll have to manage that. But also, you know, the heat here hasn't been, um, I think we're not going to be as uh, unprepared as uh, maybe other teams in the league. I think it's been humid here today it was uh, ridiculous. So, um, you know, humid or not, it's still our football that, that at the end of the day is going to give us the win. So I think us focusing on us solely and how we want to play and and you know what we're trying to do is the the best thing for our team and and for our success. Allie is correct. The heat and humidity today um, was was gross. <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, Steph, go ahead with your question. Thank you, Allie. Uh, Freya earlier talked about how Chicago is trying to force you guys into the flanks. Um, from your perspective as kind of that linchpin of the, de the defense midfield, how would you rate the midfield's work in trying to prevent the overloads in the wide areas? And on the other end of the field, how do you rate your work in trying to, you know, poke around Chicago's defense, especially when they had, you know, so many players back? Um, I think that, so yeah, they like pretty much put so many numbers um, in the midfield and kind of push us down. And I think that um, 
what makes our team, I think, different from other teams is that under pressure, we're really good at playing out. And obviously, it's not going to work every time. And I think Chicago, one of their best um, things is their press and keeping it on one side. And so when we had momentum of the game, I think you would see us kind of be able to break that pressure and switch the point of attack. And um, I think the goal, you know, came from that switching the point of attack. And I, that's our goal going into the game was being able to switch and, you know, not let them get set. So I think um, when we had momentum, we were sticking to those details. And when we didn't and kind of gave them the momentum, we're turning the ball over too much. So I think it's a, a fine balance of kind of figuring out, um, you know, when to go forward and keep it on and, you know, allow their press to keep us on one side or is someone taking a risk? Is someone not going backwards or going forwards and kind of switching the point right away and, and just being aware of that. So I think we did a good job, um, you know, just getting the win and being able to um, solve that. Could we do it better? Of course. I think that I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to football. And I think, of course, we can always um, be better. Um, and then, you know, I think their best thing is, you know, their transition, getting Mal Pugh on the ball and running at you. I think that that causes just problems everywhere. So, um, you know, I think that they did a good job of kind of allowing, you know, getting Mal the ball in good areas and, and being able to dribble, especially the first, um, you know, I think it was like, after the first five minutes or yeah, I, I felt that they kind of, the momentum switch and the ball, she was kind of dictating that. So um, yeah, I just went on a ramble. <laughs> no, it's great. Thank you. And just on your goal, it was pretty much the epitome of like the chef kiss emoji. Um, is the, the, can you discuss that touch and like, was it instinctual? Was it, you know, 10,000 hours of training that gives you that instinct? And also, you know, the serve from Caprice seemed pretty good. I mean, yeah, I think her service was absolutely perfect. And, um, you know, I played her the, uh, the long ball and, you know, when she picked her head up, I kind of was just like, play me this ball and kind of made a run and no one tracked me. And I was just hoping it landed exactly where it does. And, um, you know, where it did it, I really only had two options kind of to try to get it to the side of her or pop it over her. And I knew that she was going to be caught between getting set um, to kind of like make a save uh, or trying to get the ball, like come out big. And so once I saw her kind of like stop, that's when I knew like over the top was going to be on. And I just, uh, I just tried to get a little bit of a touch to redirect it, to go over her head. And um, I guess, yeah, instinctual or just, uh, you know, recognizing the space and, and, where the goalie was at at that moment. Um, yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, Stacy. I see your question in the chat. Uh, go ahead. So just out of curiosity, is there anything that you and the team could do? I know humanity, there's not much you could do to combat, but is there anything maybe like training wise that you and the team could help do like to build up towards that humanity to get you ready for like teams like Houston and nights like tonight? I think that, you know, I'm sure that there are, you know, ways to kind of you know, prepare yourself being in a sauna, doing workouts like in a sauna some type, but the fact that we just kind of go in and go out and kind of spending the, the least amount of time and just being able to like push through it for that, you know, 90 minutes. Um, I, I think that it's obviously doable. Teams have done it for forever. And I think like just it's more about like managing your body in those moments. Um, and also like our team, like we need to make sure we're keeping possession of the ball, you know, scoring as early as possible and kind of being able to dictate the game versus chasing it. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, just going into it, I think the weather here is kind of, um, ha kind of has been preparing us. It's been up and down, but um, you know, you can't really just, you know, we can go there and it could be pouring rain. I actually hope it, it does rain if there's, any chance of that like kind of cool it down but um but yeah Courtney go ahead with your question hi Ali congrats on your goal um I was curious if you could talk a little bit more about kind of the fluidity of attack and how you can you know or how you adapt to that when you know sometimes Midge is on the right side of the field and then you look up and she's also on the other side mm -hmm. um you had to talk about how like adapting to that and you know kind of stringing together passes of play when everything's so fluid yeah, I think that um, what's really special about this team is that we all are trying to play the same style. And that's when, you know, when things are clicking and it's working and it's one and two touch and we're playing at a pressure, um, it's really special to kind of see and, and be a part of. And I think to get mid to the ball where she's facing up running at defenders is like my goal always. And um, if I can play, you know, 
a pass short to kind of draw people in where then it's going to go to her for her to have that extra five yards you know that's always my goal and so I think I'm always aware of kind of like where people are um you know sometimes when the other team's pressuring a lot it's hard to kind of you know pick your head up look at the ball at the same time but um it's something that like I think as a team we're all aware of like where's Efi where's mid where's the space um you know even Freya she'll be very aware of you know how they're trying to force us and where their numbers are and like whose tendencies are to kind of um drop back and defend and help out or not and kind of to expose that so I think it's like an overall picture um but the fact that we're all on the same page and we want um, to play the same style uh, is what kind of creates that fluidity um, in our attack. All right, any final questions for Allie before we let her go for the evening? All right, thank you for joining Allie. Congratulations on the goal um, and a fantastic game. Thank you so much, appreciate it. All right, thanks everyone for joining. Um, that'll be it for us signing off from a very humid Red Bull Arena. <laughs>